Your eyes are quite red, my dear. It uh, spoils your beauty. I know. And I don't start crying again. I can't really help it. Don't go to pieces, whatever you do. Oh, what's the use? It's the uh, normal course of events, isn't it? You're expecting it? Or uh, had you stopped expecting it? You've been waiting for it. Good thing, too. Now the moment's arrived. I was still hoping. Oh, you're wasting your time. Oh! That crack! You've seen it, have you? And that's not the only thing. It's your fault if he's not prepared. It's your fault if it takes him by surprise. You let him go his own way. You even led him astray. Oh, oh yes, life was very sweet with your uh, fun and games, your dances, your <laughs> processions, your official dinners your winning ways and your fireworks displays, <laughs> your silver spoons and your honeymoons. Uh, how many honeymoons have you had? They were to celebrate our wedding anniversaries. Celebrated <gasps> them four times a year. We've got to, to live, live. you used to say. He's so fond of parties. What a pernicious influence you've had on him. Oh, but there. I'm afraid he liked you better than me. Oh, I wasn't at all jealous. I just realized he wasn't being very wise. And now you can't help him anymore. I'll never be able to tell him. I'll see to that. I'm used to the chores. No, please, don't say anything. It's better if he doesn't notice anything. And goes out like a light? He's not prepared. It's your fault if he isn't. He's been like one of those travelers who linger at every inn, forgetting each time that the inn is not the end of the journey. As it's inevitable, at least he must be told as tactfully as possible, tactfully, with great tact. He ought always to have been prepared for it. He ought to have thought about it every day. Time he's wasted. Tell him gently, I implore you. Take your time. You might have a heart attack. We haven't the time to take our time. This is the end of your happy days, your hijinks, your bean feasts, and your striptease. It's all over. You let things slide to the very last minute, and now we have a few moments to do what ought to have been done over a period of years. I'll tell you when you have to leave us alone, and I'll help him. What's the matter with you goggling at us like that? You're not going to break down too, I hope. You won't do it, not at first. I'll hold him back. <laughs> Don't you dare. It's all got to take place decently. Let it be a success, a triumph. It's a long time since he's had one. His palace is crumbling. His fields lie fallow. His mountains are sinking. The sea has broken the dikes and flooded the country. He's let it all go to rack and ruin. You have driven every thought from his mind with your perfumed embrace. Such bad taste. <laughs> he could still have planted conifers in the sand and cemented the threatened areas, but no. Now the kingdoms are full of holes as a gigantic Rian cheese. We couldn't fight against fate, against a natural phenomenon like erosion. Not to mention all those disastrous wars. But while his drunken soldiers were sleeping it off, our neighbors were pushing back our frontier posts. Our national boundaries were shrinking. His soldiers didn't want to fight. They were conscientious objectors. We call them conscientious objectors. The victorious armies call them cowards and deserters, and they were shot. You can see the result. Towns raised to the ground, burnt out swimming pools, abandoned bistros. 
The young are leaving their homeland in hordes. At the start of his reign, there were 9,000 million inhabitants. There wasn't room for them all. And now, only about 1,000 old people left? Less. There are 45 young people, too. No one else wants them. We didn't want them, either. We were forced to take them. But anyway, they're aging fast. Repatriated at 25. Two days later, and they're over 80. You can't pretend that's the normal way to grow old. But the king! He's still young. He was yesterday, he was last night. You'll see in a moment. Good morning, Your Majesty. Good morning, Your Majesty. I hope Your Majesties will forgive me for being rather late. I've come straight from the hospital where I've had to perform several uh, surgical operations of the greatest import to science. Doctor, is there anything new to report? He is feeling a little better, isn't he? He could show some signs of improvement, couldn't he? Couldn't he? He's in a typically critical condition that admits no change. It's true there's no hope? No hope? She doesn't want me to hope. She won't allow it. Many people have delusions of grandeur, but you are deluded by triviality. You make me ashamed for you. There's a lot of dust about, and cigarette butts on the floor. I just come from the stable milking the cow, Your Majesty. She's almost out of milk. In point of fact, there is, if you like, something new to report. What's that? There's something which merely confirms the previous symptoms. Mars and Saturn have collided. The both planets have exploded. The sun has lost between 50 and 75 percent of its strength. And the Milky Way seems to be curdling. The, the comet is exhausted, winding its tail around itself and curling up like a dying dog. It's not true. You're exaggerating. You must be. Yes, you're exaggerating. <laughs> Last night it was spring. It left us two hours and 30 minutes ago. Now it's November. Outside of our frontier, the grass is shooting up, trees are turning green, all the cows are calving twice a day, once in the morning and again in the afternoon at about five or quarter past. Yet in our own country, the brittle leaves are peeling off, the trees are sighing and dying, and the earth is quaking rather more than usual. <laughs> the Royal Meteorological Institute calls attention to the bad weather conditions. The lightning is stuck in the sky. The clouds are raining frogs. The thunder is mumbling. That's why we can't hear it. 25 of our countrymen have been liquefied. 12 have lost their heads, decapitated, this time without my surgical intervention. Attention for Her Majesty, Queen Marguerite, first wife to the king. Domestic health and registered nurse to the majesties. Her majesty, Queen Marie, second wife to the king, but first in affection. <laughs> Long live the queen, is the divinity, the doctor, gentleman, court, surgeon, bacteriologist, executioner, and astrologist. Attention for his majesty. Here. <laughs> I mean, you're here already. <laughs> How do you feel? I feel awful. I don't know quite what's wrong with me. My legs are a bit stiff. I had a job to get up, and my feet hurt. 
I must get some new slippers. Perhaps I've been growing. <laughs> I had a bad night's sleep. What with the earth quaking, the, the frontiers retreating, the cattle bellowing and the sirens screaming. Oh, there's really far too much noise. <laughs> I must look into it. We'll see what we can do. Well, good morning, Doctor. <laughs> Is it lumbago? But I, I, I'm expecting an engineer. <laughs> from abroad. Ours are no good these days. They uh, just don't care. And besides that, we haven't any. <laughs> <laughs> why did we close the Polytechnic? Oh, yes, it uh, fell for a hole in the ground. And why should I build more when they all disappear through a hole? And on top of everything else, I've got this awful headache. And those clouds. I thought I'd banish clouds. <clears throat> Clouds, we've had enough rain. Enough, I said. Enough rain! <laughs> Look at that, off they go again. Well, there's an idiotic cloud that can't restrain itself. Like an old man weak in the bladder. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are you staring at me for? My bedroom is full of cobwebs. Brush them away. I removed them all while your majesty was still sleeping. I can't think where they come from. They keep on stringing back. <laughs> What's wrong with you, my love? Oh, God. Why did she say, oh, God? It's an expression. Get rid of those cobwebs again. Oh, yes, those cobwebs are disgusting. Oh, don't dawdle. Have you forgotten how to use a broom? I need a new one. Mine's all worn out. I can really do it. Well, <laughs> What are you all staring at me for? Is there something abnormal about me? No, it's so normal to be abnormal. There's no such thing as abnormality. My dear king, you're limping. Limping? I'm not limping. Your leg hurts. It doesn't hurt. Why should it hurt? Oh, yes, it does hurt just a little, but it's nothing. I don't need any help, though I do like being helped by you. <laughs> Sire, I have some news for you. No, be quiet. Keep quiet yourself. What she says isn't true. News about what? What isn't true? Marie, why do you look so sad? Sire. We have to inform you that you are going to die. Alas, yes, Your Majesty. <laughs> but I know that. Well, of course I do. We all know it. You can remind me of it when the time comes. Marguerite, you have a mania for disagreeable conversation early in the morning. Queen Marguerite has spoken the truth. You are going to die. What again? You get on my nerves. I'll die, yes, I'll die, all right, in um, 40, 50, or 300 years, or even later, when I have the time, when I make up my mind, when I decide. Meanwhile, let's get on with the affairs of state. Oh, my legs, my back, I, I've caught a cold. Oh, this palace is so badly heated. It's full of grass and gales. What about the broken window panes? Have they replaced the tiles on the roof? No one works anymore. I shall have to see to everything myself. But, but I've had other things to do. You, you can't count on anyone. No, I can do it. There's still some use in the scepter yet. <laughs> How is my kingdom this morning? <laughs> what remains of it, Your Majesty? <laughs> there are still a few tidbits left. We have to keep an eye on them. And it would give you something else to think about. Listen for the ministers. <laughs> I expect they're still fast asleep. You know they imagine there's no more work to be done. They're off on their holiday. Not far, because now the country's all squashed up, it's shrunk. 
They're at the opposite end of the kingdom. In other words, just around the corner at the edge of the wood beside the stream. They've gone fishing. They hope to catch a few to feed the population. Go to the wood and fetch them. Oh, they won't come. They're off duty, but I'll go and see if you like. There's no discipline. They're falling into the stream. Try and fish them out again. <laughs> This country could produce any other political experts. I'd give those two the sack. <laughs> we won't find any more, Your Majesty. You won't find any more? Yes, we will, among the school children when they've grown up. We have a little time to wait, but once these two have been fished out, they can keep things going for a little while. <laughs> The only children you find in the schools today are a few congenital mental defectives, mongoloids and hydrocephalics with goiters. Yeah, I see the country is not very fit. <laughs> 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 Try and cure them, Doctor. Uh, at least improve their condition a bit. <laughs> in the old days, we used to kill those off. <laughs> His Majesty could no longer allow himself that privilege or he'd have no more subjects left. But do something with them anyway. We can't improve anything now. We can't cure anyone. Even you are incurable now. Yes, sire. <laughs> you are now incurable. Not ill. <laughs> Feels quite well, don't you? Well, a little stiffness, that's all. Besides, it's a lot better now anyway. He says it's all right, you see. Really, my dear, I feel fine. You are going to die in an hour and a half. What did you say? That's not funny. You are going to die. Yes, sire. You are going to die. You will not take your breakfast tomorrow morning. Nor will you dine tonight. The chef has shut off the gas. And who could have given such orders without my consent? I am in good health. You're teasing me. Lies! You've always wanted me dead. She's always wanted me dead. I will die when I want to. I am the king. I am the one to decide. You've lost the power to decide for yourself, Your Majesty. And now you can't even help falling ill. I'm not ill! Didn't you just say I wasn't ill? I, I am still handsome. And those pains of yours? They're all gone. Move about a bit, you'll see. <clears throat> but that's because I wasn't mentally prepared. I, I didn't have time to think. The king can cure himself, but I was too engrossed in ruling my kingdom. Oh, what a state that's in. You can't govern it now. Oh, really, you know you can't, but you won't admit it. You've lost your power over yourself and over the elements. You can't stop the rot. And you've no more power over us. You always have power over me. <laughs> Not even you. It's too late to fish the ministers out now. The stream they fell into with all its banks and willows is damaged into a bottomless pit. I see. It's a plot. You want me to abdicate? <laughs> <laughs> you must have them arrested. <laughs> God arrest them. God arrest them. Give orders. Arrest them all. Lock them up in the tower. Oh, no, the tower's collapsed. Take them away and lock them up in the cellar, in the dunghill, or in the rabbit hutch. Arrest them, all of them. That is an order. Arrest them! In the name of His Majesty! Oh. 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 You... Get moving, then. He's the one who's arrested. You see? Now he can't move. He's got gout and rheumatism. Sire, the army is paralyzed. An unknown virus has crept into his brain to sabotage his uh, strong points. 
Your Majesty, you can see for yourself. It's your own orders that paralyze him. Don't you believe it? She's trying to hypnotize you. Are you in the name of the king? God, what has come over you? Do you think you're playing statues? Don't ask questions. Don't argue. Give orders. Sweep him off his feet in a whirlwind of willpower. You see, Your Majesty, he can't move a muscle. He can't say a word. He's turned to stone. He's deaf to you already. It's a characteristic symptom. Very pronounced, medically speaking. We'll see if I have any power left or not. Prove that you have. You can if you want to. I'll prove that I want. I'll prove that I can. Stand up first. I stand up. You see how easy it is? Do you see how easy it is? You're a pair of humbugs. Bolsheviks. Conspirators. No. Alone. Because I can. All by myself. Understand. Your Majesty, several decades, or even three days ago, your empire was flourishing. In three days, you've lost all the wars you won. And those you lost, you lost again. While our harvests were rotting in the field, and our continent became a desert, our neighbor's land turned green again. And it was a wilderness last Thursday. The rockets you want to fire can't even get off the ground. Or, or else they leave the pad and drop back to Earth with a thud. That's a mere technical fault. There weren't any in the past. Your triumphs are all over. Your pains, your stiffness. I've never had them before. This is the first time. Exactly. It really has happened all at once, hasn't it? You should have expected it. It happened all at once, and you're no longer your own master. You must have noticed yourself, sire. Try to have the courage to look facts in the face. Just try. You're lying. I picked myself up. You're a very sick man, and you could never make that effort again. Of course not. Oh, what, what can you still do? Can you change anything? Just try, and you'll see. It is because I never used my willpower that everything went to pieces. Sheer neglect. It can all be restored and look like new. You'll soon see what I can do. God, move, approach. He can't. He can only obey other people now. Guard, take two paces forward. Guard, two paces back. Off with that guard's head, off with his head. <laughs> his head's toppling and it's going to fall. No, it isn't. It wobbles a bit, that's all. No worse than it was before. Off with the doctor's head. Off with it at once. The doctor has a sound head on his shoulders. Off with Marguerite's head. Knock it on the floor.
need to do something and I'll do it. Come to me. Kiss me. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I'll do it. Come to me then. I'd like to. I'm going to. I'm going to. But my arms fall to my sides. Dance then! Dance! At least turn your head. I can't. Step forward. Come closer to me. Yes, sir. And smile! I don't know what to do, how to walk. I've suddenly forgotten. Take a few steps nearer. You see she is coming? Because she listened to me. Stop. Stand still. Forgive me, Your Majesty. It's not my fault. Do you need any more proof? I order trees to sprout. I order the sky to disappear. What? Nothing. A thunderbolt, one I can hold in my hand. What? Nothing. I order Juliet to come in through the great door. No, not that door. This door. Go out by that door. I order you to stay! I order bells to ring! I order bugles to sound! A salute from 121 guns in my honor! Uh, nothing! You're getting too tired, my dear little king. Rest a little, wait. For an hour, we'll manage it. In one hour and 25 minutes, you're going to die. Yes, Your Majesty, in one hour, 24 minutes and 50 seconds. In one hour, 24 minutes and 41 seconds. <gasps> Prepare yourself. Don't give in. Stop trying to distract him. If you look through this telescope, which can see through roofs and walls, you will notice a gap in the sky which used to house the royal constellation. In the annals of the universe, His Majesty has been entered as deceased. I'm not! Please don't let me die. I don't want to. The king is dead! Long live the king! We shall miss Your Majesty greatly, and we shall say so publicly. That's a promise. I've been trapped. I should have been warned. I've been trapped. You were often warned. You warned me too soon. I will not die. I don't want to. You'd been condemned. And you ought to have thought about that the very first day. And then day after day. Five minutes every day. Oh, now, that wasn't much to give up. Five minutes every day, then ten minutes, a quarter, half an hour. Oh, that's the way to train yourself. Oh, but I did think about it. Not seriously, not profoundly, never with all your heart and soul. You kept putting it off. At uh, 20, you said you'd wait until your 40th year before you went into training. At 40... I was alive, wonderfully alive! At 50, you wanted first to reach your 60s. And so you went on from 60 to 90 to 125 to 200 until you were 400 years old. Instead of putting things off for 10 years at a time, you put them off for 50. Then you postponed them from century to century. But I was just about to start. If I could only have a whole century before me, perhaps then I'd have the time. All you have left now, sire, is one hour. You must do it all in one hour. You'll never have enough time. It's impossible. 
He must be given more. A well-spent hour is worth centuries of neglect and failure. Five minutes are enough. Ten fully conscious seconds. We're giving him an hour. That's uh, 60 minutes. 3,600 seconds. He's in luck. Unlike an actor on the first night who doesn't know his lines, who dries, dries, dries. Like an orator pushed into a platform who's forgotten his speech and has no idea who he's meant to be addressing. I don't know this audience. I don't want to. I have nothing to say to them. What a state I'm in. The king has just alluded to his death. Do the people know the news? Have you warned them? I want everyone to know I'm going to die. My good people, I'm going to die. Hear me! Not getting the time to die! I want everyone to know! Ah! I'm going to die! Oh, people, I've got to die! Scandalous. Just a king! He's just a man! Your Majesty, think of the death of Louis XIV or of the Emperor Charles V who slept in his own coffin for 20 years. It is your majesty's duty to die with dignity. I with dignity? Help! Your king is going to die! I my little king! Count and won't help! Say that to me! I can hear Say that to me! Perhaps they're going to save me! There's no one there. It's only the echo a bit late in answering. It's impossible! He's, He's lying, lying just like anyone else. A commonplace reaction. Oh, I'd hope terror would have produced some fine, ringing phrases. I must put you in charge of the Chronicles. We'll attribute to him the fine words spoken by others. We'll invent some new ones if need be. Oh, the good old king is life for the poor old king. <laughs> Let him try everything more. You'll feel much better, sire. Much more comfortable with a blanket over your knees. I want to stand on my feet. I I want to scream, I want to... Ah! Oh, his Majesty is screaming! He won't scream for long. I know the symptoms. He'll get tired, he'll stop, and then he'll listen to us. Take his scepter. It's too heavy for him. I won't wear that. It's a sort of crown that's not so heavy. Let me keep my scepter. You have no longer the strength to hold it. It's no use trying to lean on it now. Your majesty will carry you. We'll wheel you along in the chair. Leave him his scepter. He wants it. Perhaps it's not true. Perhaps it's not true. Perhaps it's a nightmare. Perhaps it's a ten to one chance. One, one chance in a thousand. Uh, I often used to win the sweet stakes. Your majesty. I won't hear you anymore. Your words frighten me. I don't hear any more talk. I'm too frightened. I won't hear what you're saying. And don't come any nearer either. You frighten me with your pity. <laughs> I didn't mean that. Speak to me. Stand by me. Hold me. <laughs> His legs can hardly carry him. My arms hurt, too. Does that mean it's starting? No! Why was I born if I wasn't meant to live forever? Never had the time to say knife. <laughs> never had the time to get to know life. He never even tried. It was like a brisk walk through a flowery lane. A promise that's broken. A smile that fades. Yet he had the greatest of experts to tell him about it. Theologians, people of experience, and books he never read. I never had the time. Oh, you used to say you had all the time in the world. <laughs> I'd say things were looking up. However much he moans and groans, he's started to reason things out. He's complaining, protesting, expressing himself. That means he's begun to resign himself. 
Your Majesty, you have made war 180 times. You've led your armies into 2,000 battles. First, on top of a white horse with a conspicuous red and white plume. You never knew fear. And then, when you modernized the army, you would stand on top of a tank or on the wing of a fighter plane, leading the formation. You was a hero. You have come near death a thousand times. You were a hero, do you hear? Aided and abetted by this doctor here, the executioner, you uh, ordered the assassination. The execution, Your Majesty, not assassination. I was only obeying orders. I was a mere instrument, uh, just an executor, not an executioner. It was all euthanasia to me. Well, then, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, please forgive me. Uh, you had my parents butchered, your own brothers, your rivals, our cousins and great-grand-cousins, and all their family, friends, and cattle. You massacred the lot and scorched all their lands. <laughs> but that was for reasons of state. You're dying, too, because of your state. I am the state! And what a state the poor man's in. It was the law. Above the law. No, I'm not above the law anymore. Not above the law anymore. His Majesty is no longer above the law. He's just like us and not unlike my granddad. Oh, baby. My poor child. 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 That I can make a fresh start and they won't come for me. I want to be a baby. You can be my mother. I, I, I want to go back to my school and be with all my schoolmates. I don't know my reading, writing, and arithmetic. What do two and two make? Two and two are four. You knew that already. There's so many people being born right this moment. Numberless babies all over the world. Not in our country. The birth rate's down to zero. Not a lettuce, not a grass that grows. Utter sterility because of you. I won't have you blaming him. Perhaps everything will grow again when he's gone. When I've gone, when I've gone, they'll laugh, stuff themselves silly and dance on my tomb as if I had never existed. Please make them remember me. Make them weep and despair and perpetuate my memory in all their history books. School children and the scholars study nothing else but me. My kingdom. My exploits. Let them burn all the other books, destroy all the other statues, and set mine up in the public squares. My portrait in every ministry. My photograph in every office of every town hall. Including rates and taxes. And all the hospitals. Every car and push cart, flying ship and steam plane be named after me. Make them forget all the other captains and kings, poets, tenors and philosophers, and fill every conscious mind with memories of me. Let them learn to read by spelling out my name. B E. B.E. or Beranger. Let my likeness be on the millions of crosses in all our churches. Make them say mass for me and let me be the host. Let the windows light up in the shape and color of my eyes. And the rivers trace my profile on the plains. Let them cry my name throughout eternity and beg me. And implore me! Perhaps you'll come back again? Perhaps I will come back. Let them preserve my body in some palace or a throne and bring me food. Let musicians play for me and virgins grovel. 
at my ice cold feet. <laughs> He's raving, ma. His Majesty the King is delirious. If such be your Majesty's will, we shall embalm your body and preserve it. I don't want to be embalmed. I want nothing to do with that corpse. I want to feel arms around me. Warm arms. Cool arms. Soft arms. All things pass into the past. My darling king, there's no past. There's no future. There's just a present that goes right on to the end. Everything is present. Be present. Be present. Alas, I'm present only in the past. No, you're not. That's right, Beranger. Try and get things straight. Yes, my king, get things straight, my darling. Stop torturing yourself. Exist and die are just words. Figments of our imagination. Once you realize that, nothing can touch you. Just be an eternal question mark. What? Why? How? Remember that you can't find an answer. It's an answer in itself. It's you, all the life in you, straining to break out. Dive into an endless maze of wonder and surprise. Then you too will have no end and can exist forever. Everything is strange and undefinable. Let it dazzle and confound you, tear your prison bars aside. Batter down the walls, escape from definitions, breathe again. Open the floodgates of joy and life will dazzle and confound you. Illuminating waves of joy will fill your veins with wonder if you want them to. I implore you to remember that morning in June we spent together by the sea. And happiness raced through you and inflamed you. You knew then what joy meant. Rich. Changeless, undying. You knew it once. You can know it again. You found that fiery radiance within you. If it was there once, it's still there now. Look for it again. Find it in yourself. I don't understand. You don't understand. You never did understand yourself yourself together. How do I manage that? When no one can or will help me. And I can't help myself. I talk like a book and make literature of it. 
And so it goes on to the bitter end. As long as we live, we turn everything into literature. His Majesty fights some constellation in literature. The king is walking. Don't live the king. No! He's down. <laughs> no, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. He's up again. The king is up. Don't live the king. He's up again. No! I'm still here. I'm, I'm, I can see walls and furniture. There's air to breathe. I can watch people watching me and catch their voices. I'm still alive. I can think. I can see. I can still see it here. I'm the king. I'm fire. He wants to sit on his throne. I can still stand up. I can still stand up. I used to like Mozart. I'll never hear that music again. You'll forget all about it. Did you mend my trousers? Or do you think it's not worth the trouble now? There was a hole in my red cloak. Have you patched it? Have you sewn the buttons on my pajamas? Have you had my shoes resold? I never gave it another thought. You never gave it another thought? What do you think about? Talk to me. What do you think about when you do the housework? Nothing, Your Majesty. What does your husband do? I'm a widow. What sort of life do you have? A bad life, sire. Life can never be bad. It's a contradiction in terms. Life's not very beautiful. Life is life. I do all the palace laundry in the wash house. It hurts me hands and it cracks my skin. Haven't they bought you a washing machine yet? Oh, Margarita Palace and no washing machine. We had to pawn it to raise a state loan. I polish the parquet floors in sweep, sweep, sweep. There's no end to it. There's no end to it. It gives me the backache. I get quite worn out. Exhausted. Well, you ought to have told us. I did tell you. That's true. Such a lot has escaped my notice. There's no window in my room. Where do you live? In the attic. Come down every morning, you take the stairs. First one step, then another. Down a step, down a step, down a step. And when you get dressed, first you put on your stockings, then your shoes. Down at heel. And a dress. It's and amazing. That cheap one, a tatty old thing. Oh, you don't know what you're saying. It's a beautiful tatty old thing. Once I had an abscess in the mouth and they took out one of my teeth. Yes, you're in terrible pain, but it starts to ease off and then disappears. It's a tremendous relief. 
and it makes you feel wonderfully happy. I feel tired, tired, tired. Well, so you take a rest. That's good. Not enough time off for that. But you can hope you'll have some one day. And then, then I have to do the cooking. Sublime. Ah, oh, you're wrong. I hate it. It's a bore. It's a bore? Some people one can never understand. It's wonderful to feel bored. And not to feel bored. To lose one's temper and not to lose one's temper. To be discontented and to be content. To practice resignation and to insist on your rights. You get excited. You, you talk to people, they talk to you. You touch, they touch you. All of that's magical. It's like an endless celebration. Yeah, right there, there's no end to it. After that, I still have to wait at table. You wait at table? You wait at table? What do you serve at table? Ah, I don't know. The main dish. Stew. Stew? Stew? It's a meal in itself. Oh, I used to be so fond of stew. With gravy and potatoes and carrots. All mixed up together, then crushed with a fork and mashed together. We could bring him some. Send for some stew. Bad for his help. He's on a diet. I want some stew. It's not what the doctor orders for a dying man. But if it's his last wish... He must detach himself. Dead, that stew. There never was such a thing as stew. It's banished from the universe. Stew has been banished from the lake and breath of the land. At last, something achieved. At least he's given that up. Of all the things we crave for, the minor ones go first. Wipe the sweat from his face. He's dripping wet. No! Not you. It's panic oozing through his pores. You see, his temperature has gone down. Though there's not much sign of goose flesh. His hair was standing on end before. Now it's resting, and lying flat. He's not used to being so terrified yet. Oh, no. But now, he can see the fear inside him. That's why he's dared to close his eyes. He'll open them again. Already, he's begun to uh, let things take their course. He'll still have a few setbacks. It's not as quick as all that, but he won't have the wind up anymore. And that would have been too degrading. He'll still be subject to fright, but pure fright without uh, abdominal complications. We can't hope this death will be an example to others, but it will be fairly respectable. His uh, death will kill him now, and not his fear. We'll have to help him all the same, Your Majesty. He'll need a lot of help till the very last second, till he's drawn his very last breath. You used to love me. You love me still as I have always loved you. She thinks of no one but herself. It's human nature. I've always loved you. I love you still. I don't know why, but that doesn't seem to help. Love is mad. Love is mad. And if you're mad with love, if you love blindly, completely, death will steal away. If you love me, 
If you love everything, love will consume your fear. Love lifts you up. You let yourself go. Fear lets go of you. The whole universe is one. Everything lives again. The cup that was drained is full. I'm full, all right, but full of holes. I'm coming to an end. There's no end. Others will take your place and gaze at the sky for you. I'm dying. The younger generation's expanding the universe. I'm dying. Conquering new constellations. I'm dying. Boldly battering at the gates of heaven. They can knock them flat for all I care. I'm dying. You were a pioneer, a guide, a harbinger of all these new developments you count. And you will be counted. I'll never be the accountant. I'm dying. Everything that has been will be. Everything that will be is. Everything that will be has been. You're inscribed forever in the annals of the universe. Who look up those old archives? I die, so let everything die. No, let everything stay. No, let everything die. If my death won't resound through worlds without it, let everything die. No, let everything remain. His Majesty the King wants the remains to remain. No, let it all die. His Majesty the King wants it all to die. No, let it all stay. Let it all survive me. No, let it all die. Let it all stay. Die. Stay. Die. He doesn't know what he wants. I don't think he knows what he wants anymore. He no longer knows what he wants. His brain's degenerating. He's senile. Gaga. His Majesty has gone... Idiot! Be quiet. We want no more doctor's bulletins given to the press. Doctor's bulletin suspended by order of Her Majesty, Queen Marguerite. My king, my little king. When I had sleepless nights and wandered out of my room, you would wake up too. In your pink flowered dressing gown, you'd come and find me in the throne room, take me by the hand and lead me back to bed. It was just the same with my husband. I used to share my colds with you. And the flu. You won't catch colds now. In the morning, we used to open our eyes at the very same moment. Now I shall close them alone, or at least not have you here beside me. We used to think the same things at the same time. And you would finish a sentence I'd just started in my head. And you'd rub my back for me in the bath. And you'd choose my ties for me. I didn't always like them. We used to fight about that. No one ever knew. No one ever will. Do you still love me? He does still love me. Do you love me today? Do you love me this minute? Here I am. Here. I'm here, look. Take a good look. Look at me.
I love myself. In spite of everything, I always love myself. See myself. Feel myself. Contemplate myself. It was His Majesty, my Commander-in-Chief, who set the Thames on fire. It was He who invented gunpowder and stole fire from the gods. He nearly blew the whole place up. But He caught the pieces and He tied them back together again with string. I helped him. But it wasn't so easy. He wasn't so easy either. He was the one who fitted up the first forges on Earth. He discovered the way to make steel. To work 18 hours a day, and he made us work even harder. He was our chief engineer. As an engineer, he invented the first balloon, and then the Zeppelin, and finally, with his own hands, he built the first airplane. At the start, it wasn't a success. The first test pilots, Icarus and the rest, all fell into the sea. Till eventually, he piloted the plane himself. I was his mechanic. Long before that, when he was just a little prince, he'd invented the wheelbarrow. I used to play with him. And rails? And railway? And automobiles! What's an automobile? It runs along by itself. He wrote tragedies and comedies under the name of Shakespeare! Yeah, that's how Shakespeare was. Well, you ought to have told us before. And think how long we've been racking our brains to find out. It was a secret he wouldn't let me. He invented the telephone and the telegraph, and he fixed them up himself. He did everything with his own hands. He was never any good with his hands. He used to call the plumber as the slightest sign of a leak. My commander-in-chief was a very handy man. Now he can't even get his shoes on. Not too long ago, he managed to split the atom. I'm here. I'm here. What do they say I did? I don't remember what I did. I forget. I forget. Do you remember me? I used to have a little ginger cat. He remembers a cat. I had found him in a field, stolen from his mother, a real wild cat. He was two weeks old, maybe a little more, but he knew how to scratch and bite. He was quite fierce. I 
fed him and stroked him and took him home and he grew into the gentlest of cats. Once, madam, he crept into the coat sleeve of a lady visitor. He was the politest of creatures, a natural politeness, like a prince. When we would come home in the middle of the night, he would come and greet us with his eyes full of sleep, then stumble off again back to his box. In the morning, he would wake us to crawl into our bed one morning, we had shut the bedroom door. He tried so hard to open it, shoving his little behind against it. He got so angry, made a terrible row. He sulked for a week. He was scared stiff of the vacuum cleaner. A bit of a coward, really, that cat. Defenseless. A poet cat. We bought him a clockwork mouse. He began by sniffing it anxiously, but when we wound it up and the mouse began to move, he spat at it, then took to his heels and crouched under the wardrobe. We tried to introduce him to the outside world. We put him down on the pavement outside the window. He was terrified, afraid of the pigeons that hopped all around him. There he was, pressed against the wall, meowing and crying to me in desperation. He thought all other animals and cats were strange creatures to be feared, or enemies. He felt only at home with us. We were his family. He wasn't afraid of men. He'd jump on their shoulders and lick their hair without warning. He thought we were cats, and cats were something else. And yet, one fine morning, he must have felt the urge to go out on his own. The neighbor's big dog killed him, and there he was like a toy cat, a twitching marionette with one eye gone and a paw torn off, like a doll destroyed by a sadistic child. I used to dream about him that he was lying in the grate on the glowing embers. Marie was surprised he didn't burn, but I told her, cats don't burn. They're fireproof. He came meowing out of the grate in a cloud of billowing smoke, but it wasn't him anymore. What a transformation. It was a different cat. Fat and ugly. An enormous she-cat. A bit like his mother, the wild cat. A bit uh, like Marguerite. Great pity. I must say, really.
real shame he was such a good king. Far from easy to please. Really uh, quite wicked, revengeful, and cruel. Vain. There have been worse. He was gentle. He was tender. We were rather fond of him. We both complained about him, though. That's forgotten now. It's all his fault. He never cared about what came after him. He never gave a thought for his successors. After him, the deluge. Worse than the deluge. After him, there's nothing. Selfish bungler. He was king of a great kingdom. The very day he was born, he created the sun. That wasn't enough. He had to have fire, too. People, and faces, and buildings, and rooms, and beds. And his fingers, the way he looked and the way he breathed. <laughs> I'm still breathing now. He's still breathing because I'm here. He's still breathing. Yes, Your Majesty, he's still breathing because we're here. Yes, there is no doubt about it. The kidneys have stopped functioning, but the blood's still circulating. They're going round and round. His heart is sound. It'll have to stop soon. What's the good of a heart that has no reason to beat? You're right. You hear? It's gone berserk. But there it is, racing away. <laughs> then it slows down. Then off again as fast as it can go. Good God, everything's falling to pieces. A mad heart, a madman's heart. A heart in panic. It's infectious. Anyone can catch it. Well, be quiet in a moment. We know every phase of this disease. It's always like this when a universe snuffs out. It proves his universe is not unique. That never entered his head. All time. All firm. Clench your fist with all your strength. Don't let go of me. Cling to me. Don't let go. It's I who keep you alive. I keep you alive. You keep me alive. Do you hear? Do you understand? If you forget me, I'm nothing. Give in, Your Majesty. Abdicate, Majesty. I can hear. I, I can see. Who are you? Are you my mother? No. My sister? <laughs> my, my wife? My daughter? My niece? I know you. I'm sure I do know you. I... <laughs> You hateful woman, why are you with me? Go away! Don't look at her! Turn your eyes on me. I'll keep them wide open. Oh, I'm here. Remember who you are? I'm Marie. Marie. If you don't remember, gaze at me and learn again that I am Marie. Look at my eyes, my face, my hair. My arms and learn me off my heart. You're upsetting him. He's past learning anything now. I can't hold you back. At least turn and look at me. Keep this picture of me in your mind and take it with you. He could never drag that around. He hasn't got the strength. Throw everything away. Lighten the load. Lighten the load, Your Majesty. Marie! You see, your name means nothing to him now. Marie. It's sad. Repeated it, but without understanding. He'll start his journey with a picture of me in his mind. That won't get in his way. Have another look. He can't see you. He won't see you anymore. That's true. He's lost his sight. He can't see anymore. The doctor has made an official pronouncement. His Majesty is officially. Lord! Not enough exercise. There's a mirror in my entrails where everything's reflected. I can see more and more. I can see the world. I can see life slipping away. Look beyond the reflection. I see myself, nothing but me everywhere. I'm the earth, I'm the sea, I'm the wind, I'm the fire. Am I in every mirror? 
Or am I the mirror of everything? He loves himself too much. A well-known disease of the psyche. Narcissism. He wants something to lean on. Where are the walls? Where are the arms? Where are the windows? Where are the doors? The walls are here, Your Majesty. We are all here. The wall is here. Scepter. Here it is. God, where are you? Answer me. Still yours to command, Your Majesty. Still yours to command. Yes, yes, I'm here. Yes, yes, I'm here. Your apartments are this way, Your Majesty. I swear we'll never leave you, Your Majesty. They're here beside you. We'll stay with you. Juliet? God! <laughs> Doctor! Doctor, am I going deaf? No, Your Majesty, not yet. Doctor, Doctor. Forgive me, Your Majesty. I must go. I'm afraid I have to. I'm very sorry. Please forgive me. Obligation. Where are the others? They've gone. They've shut me in. They were a nuisance, all those people. They were in your way, hanging around you, getting under your feet. I admit they got on your nerves. I didn't give anyone leave to go. Make them come back. Call them. They could never have gone away if you hadn't wanted them to. Let them come back. You've even forgotten their names. What were they called? How many were there? I don't like being shut in. Open the doors. A little patience. The doors will soon be open wide. The doors? The doors? How disobedient he is. <laughs> Oh, uh, don't clench your fist like that. Open your fingers out. What are you holding? He's holding the whole kingdom in his hand. In miniature. On microfilm. In tiny grains. That grain won't grow again. It's bad seed. Drop them. Let go of the plains. Let go of the mountains. You are only dust. Oh, come along. Oh, you're still trying to resist. Where does he find all this willpower? No reason why you should stumble. I'll guide you. Don't be frightened. You can't do it now, can't you? It's easy, isn't it? Don't turn your head to see what you can never see again. Think hard. Concentrate on your heart. Keep right on. You must. Two moons and two heavens to light. There's another sun appearing. And another. A third firmament shooting up and fanning out. As one sun sets, others are rising. Dawn and twilight all at once. Beyond, 
the reservoirs of oceans. Beyond oceans that engulf oceans. Cross them. Beyond the 777 poles. Further. Further. Blue. Blue. Still distinguished colors. Give up this empire, too. And give your colors up. They're leading you astray, holding you back. You can't linger any longer. You can't stop again. You mustn't. Don't be frightened. Go on. It's not the day now. Or the night. There's no more day and no more night. Try and follow that wheel that's spinning around in front of you. Don't lose sight of it. Follow it. Not too close. It's all in flames. You might get burnt. Smell that flower for the last time. Then throw it away. Forget its perfume. Climb over the fence. That big truck won't run you over. It's a mirage. Now you've lost the power of speech. Who's left for you to talk to? Turn and face me. Look at me. Look right through me. Give me your legs. The right one. Now the left. Now let me have your right arm. Your left arm. Your chest. Your two shoulders and your stomach. There you are, you see. No more need for your heart to beat. No more reason to breathe. There's a lot of fuss about nothing, wasn't it? Thank you.